Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Alex Hintz, a manager of swine technical services for Novus International. So Alex, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Thanks, Clayton. Like you said, my name is Dr. Alex Hintz. I am the Swine Technical Services Manager for Novus here in North America. I'm a DVM by training. I was a swine practitioner for a few years out of school at the University of Wisconsin before I transitioned into technical services about seven years ago. I worked in technical services on the pharmaceutical side for about three years, and now I've been in the nutrition side with Novus for the last four. A leader in swine nutrition solutions driven by science. Novus's products and services look at the whole animal, focusing on productivity and well-being in order to feed the world affordable and wholesome food. For more information, visit Novus's website at www.novusint.com. Gotcha. So when bringing up our topic today, it seems quite relevant as I look outside and see the unfortunately see the recent snowfall that we had here, at least here in Western Illinois, where I'm located. Um, and we can obviously we're getting into the winter season and it's getting a bit colder. Um, so that brings up the topic of when it comes to pig health during the cold months, what all is important and what are some key factors to keeping the pigs healthy? Yeah, and I'm staring out my window right here to a couple inches of snow as well. So we're all we're all starting to deal with that. But as we all know, it's per season respiratory disease season and the most important thing is just trying to keep the diseases out without getting our pigs infected and we're starting to seal barns up a little bit more air isn't as good moving through and the pigs just seem to be more susceptible at this time of the year so what can we all do to, to try to keep some of those out and i like to boil biosecurity down to the basics and then try to expand on it from there so filtration in south farms is, is one of the bigger things that we talk about in an industry and a lot of the research we're seeing out there today shows that filtering the barns, it, it does pay for itself. And it has a very, very good success rate of keeping both PERS and other respiratory diseases out, as well as some of the other bugs that might come in. We also want to make sure that we're keeping the barns clean, we're keeping our trucks clean, and we're having that clean, dirty line as demarcated as possible not letting anybody step over from the dirty side to the clean side or the clean side to the dirty side because that's probably one of the biggest risks of transmission after the animals coming in is, is people either bringing it in from the outside or having some of our people go from different sites and bringing it in from one dirty site to a clean site. Gotcha. And you briefly touched on this already, um, but with pigs being more susceptible in these winter months, to PERS or PED or other viral contamination, is that usually due to a air quality or filtration issue, or are there other issues that can commonly occur during these times that can make them more susceptible? So the air quality and just having the barn sealed up is probably one of the biggest factors, but viruses don't like heat. So when the temperature turns colder, the viruses have a much better chance of surviving and much better chance of transmitting to the other animals within the site. So during the cooler months, fall, winter, and into spring, temperatures are cooler, viruses are much more likely to survive both on surfaces and in the air, and then the pigs are much more susceptible to those viruses during those times of the year. Gotcha, and like you mentioned, when it comes to biosecurity with like the dirty and clean side, that is a very important line that you have to be careful crossing, but unfortunately, it is also one where when you're just not thinking about it, kind of absentmindedly going through the motions, can also be very commonly broken and just that split second can have a large impact. So that's one example, but I guess for another other examples, what would you say are some common biosecurity breaches that you typically see on farms? So a lot of times it's just not paying attention to things you do on a daily basis. So not changing your clothes when you get on the site, not having dedicated clothes to either a, a clean room. And then on a south farm, it's going from older pigs to younger pigs versus younger pigs to older pigs. You want to try to keep those diseases that might pop up as, as the pigs get older on the sow, those 15 to 20 days on the sow during just, or lactation. You don't want to walk back and bring any of those diseases to some of the younger animals on site. So those are some of the things that we see commonly in our industry and just 
some things that you not, might not pay attention to, but can make a big difference. So we've talked about some f- facility management and some uh, personnel management issues that we can improve in order to um, maintain a high health status on these farms during the winter months. Um, but when it comes to uh, pig health management and nutritional management, what are some strategies that we can implement on our farms in order to avoid one of these PED or PERS outbreaks during these next few cold months? So one of the big things that we keep seeing in research out there, and Scott D's on the, the cutting edge of some of these projects, is looking at feed biosecurity. So what risk does feed play in disease transmission onto the site, whether that's PERS, whether that's PED, or some of the other viruses and bacteria that we might deal with? And for the first time, Scott and his team published a paper recently showing that feed was the inciting cause for a PERS infection on an naive south farm. It, it's always been thought of as a risk, but it's never been quantified before as the true cause and the true transmission factor of PERS onto a south farm. So is there something that we as an industry can do to prevent or minimize that risk of the viruses coming in through the feed? And over the last four or five years, a lot of research has been done on feed risk reduction and feed mitigation of some of these viruses. So can we put a product in the feed that not only deactivates or eliminates the virus in the feed, but also reduces the risk of transmission of these viruses from the feed to the pigs? And some of the products out there have have done a really, really good job of that and have reduced the risk while also giving the pigs a nutritional benefit as well. So a a lot of the times in the industry in a, a high feed cost situation and when profitability is a struggle, we don't want to spend money just to spend money. We want to try to find products that will do do multiple things. So can we find a product that can enhance production, enhance performance, but also give us this feed risk reduction? Gotcha. So when talking about feed biosecurity, that makes me think of a few recent episodes I've uh, recorded, um, one with Dr. Mike Tokash and Ethan Stoss, as well as another one with Gilles Langeois over in France um, about using feed acidifiers in feed. And with that acidification, it can help mitigate um, viral contamination in the feed to uh, prevent a little bit of PED or PERS outbreak that's being transmitted through feed. So have you guys done any work with that or used anything with acidifiers in feed? So we've started to look at different inclusion levels of one of our products that we have called Activate DA to see what level in the feed we need to either reduce the risk of PERS, reduce the risk of PED, and then also give us some performance benefits on the other end. And one of the interesting things that we're learning is that PERS isn't the most hardy virus in the feed. So you can use a lower inclusion of an acidifier like Activate DA in the feed for PERS risk reduction, whereas PED, as we all know from the outbreak when it came over here in 2013, it's a very hardy virus in the environment and a very hardy virus in the feed. So it takes a little bit higher inclusion rate to deactivate and and reduce that risk. And a lot of times just looking at different acidifiers and looking at different products out there, you have to pay attention if you want just PERS viral risk reduction, if you want PED viral risk reduction, or if you want both and figure out what's most important to you on on your site and your farm. L-Biotics, the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs, brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L-Biotics contains heat-treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L-Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Gotcha. And with that, do you guys are you guys doing any more research or plan to do any more research about implementing that product or different inclusion levels or for just different applications in general? The big thing is trying to figure out which inclusion makes sense both for the viral risk reduction as well as the performance benefit you're going to get on the south farm. And then seeing if that performance benefit can carry over into the nursery because we don't really get paid too much on pigs at the south farm. But if we can improve nursery survivability, if we can improve nursery performance with a sow intervention, that's where the money is going to be well spent. So 
I always recommend to not only our company, but any other companies and any other researchers out there to try to focus on, can we have cell farm interventions that play a role into the nursery and play a role into the finisher? Because then we're going to get a lot more bang for our buck at that point. Gotcha. Yeah. Always, if you can tackle the problem at the source, that's a lot easier to deal with at first than to deal with it after it's spread and gone out each, all the pigs gone to different farms. So if you can tackle it first, yeah, that's going to save a lot of time, a lot of trouble, a lot of money. So I agree with you completely there, but I believe that's all that we have time for today. So thank you again for coming on the show. And appreciate the time and appreciate everyone listening. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.